Hi guys, it's John here with another benchmark comparison test between the Galaxy S22 Ultra with its 8 Gen 1 and the Galaxy S23 with its 8 Gen 2. So I've got the latest June update on both of these now. Now I did understand that there's some interesting problems with the S23 update this month. So I think we've got a slightly older version of the update here, but we have got the June update nonetheless. So it'll be interesting to see if that's made any big differences at all in our benchmarks. Now I've added one additional benchmark to the test this month and that is going to be a browser speed test that was suggested in one of my previous benchmarks that we could do a comparison and see how the browser speed is during each monthly update. So we'll start off with the CPU benchmark in Geekbench 6, we'll then move on to the compute test, the Antutu test, 3 Mark, and then finally end with the browser benchmark. As you can see in the top right of the screen we have the temperature widget and we also have both phones starting at exactly 100% battery. So I'll skip to the end of these tests as they're quite boring and we'll come back to the results and see how they did compared to last month's. Okay, so the CPU benchmark has just finished and some quite good results here for both phones. So they both had a small increase since last month's update with the S23 actually getting a much higher multi-score than it did last month, nearly 7.5% extra in its multi-score. So interestingly, the results actually went up each test I did on the single core and the same on the multi-core on the S23 Ultra. Let's move on to the GPU compute test now and we'll see how they do here. Okay then, so there we are with the GPU results and there's been a massive improvement here on the S22 Ultra. We've gone up 20% since last month. So even though the temperatures have stayed around the same, around 36 degrees, 20% increase from last month is massive. So amazing result there for the 8 Gen 1. 8 Gen 2 has only gone up by about 1%, so nothing really exciting there. But yeah, amazing results there for 8 Gen 1. Right, let's move on to Antutu, and we are running version 10.0.4, so we'll see how things go here. We can see last month they both did really, really well, so hopefully we can get something better this month with any luck. Okay, so I don't know what's happening here, but the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 just keeps on looping the first test, so I'm not going to be able to get any results from here, sadly. Um, I have stopped it and restarted it, but it's still not playing ball, so we're just going to have to go with no result here. You can see also the battery, this is looped about four or five times now, the battery's gone down quite a bit, so I can't really compare the batteries anymore, which is a bit of a shame. So not really an increase of much to talk about on the 8 Gen 2 here, about 2% from last month, but uh, still doing really nicely there with its 1.5 million. What we'll do is move on to the 15 minute stress test now, and we'll go through there and see if we get any better performance compared to last month. Right, so after the 15 minute benchmark there, we can see the S22 still not looking very good here, looking a bit worse than last month, hovering around this 60% mark for the majority of the test here. Core wise, you can also see that the cores are not doing too great. They are going up and down all over the place here, which we have seen before, but they do seem to be running a bit slower this month in the update. Now on the S23, however, I think this is probably the, one of the best we've ever seen. We're here at around 85% for most of the test, at least popping up to around 90%, dropping down a bit towards the end of the test. But yeah, really good performance there with the clocks as well. Look at this, they're just pretty much locked as to where they should be. So yeah, really fantastic results there for the 8 Gen 2. And the 8 Gen 1 has sadly lost a bit of its oomph this month with the fact that we're staying at around 60% performance here. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the Wildlife Extreme stress test now and we'll see how they do here compared to last month's. Okay, so the Wildlife Extreme test has finished and we can see here that the S22 has done pretty well here. The best loop score is a lot better than it was last month. Lowest loop is around the same. The stability just a bit less than it was last month. Now if we compare that to the HN2 on the right, we've had big improvements on both the best and the lowest scores. Uh, stability has gone down somewhat, but to get those extra scores, it may be a good trade-off to have that extra power when you're playing your game. So yeah, big improvement there for the S23. So we'll move on to the Slingshot Extreme now and we'll see how they do here. 
and then we'll move on to the browser test after this. Okay, so after the slingshot there, we can see that there hasn't been a huge amount of change at all between either phone, the S22 slightly less than last month by about a quarter of a percent, and the S23 up a tiny bit by about 6% here in its test. But you can see here that the massive difference we have here in graphics performance on both phones, it's really nice to see how well this is doing compared to the S22. Let's move on to the new test now of our browser, and we're just gonna see how well these two work. I'm just using Chrome for this, as that's probably what most people are using. So we'll see how this fares. And then you'll get a bit of an idea as to how well the browsing is compared on both of these phones. Okay, so there we are with the browser bench scores. Score of 180 compared to 109. We've got nothing to compare this with, but obviously the browsing is noticeably better on the S23. I have noticed that during my time with it so far. So yeah, definitely a lot quicker there for the S23. So we're gonna to have to ignore the battery life remaining because we did have those issues on the S22 where it was looping on the Antutu benchmark. Yeah, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Have you noticed any improvements? Battery life wise in general, the S23 has still been doing really well for me. Quite a heavy user doing lots of video calls throughout the day. And I always end up with around 15 to 25% left by the time I go to bed at about 11 o'clock. So it's always lasting at least a day of reasonably heavy usage. So yeah, let me know if you've noticed any improvements with battery life. I heard the April update was meant to improve some things. So yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next video.